Welcome to Fight. Thank you for coming to our podcast. Thank you for inviting me. There's nothing more important than talking to people that will be the future leaders of our country. And at the same time, it's important to me to hear from your perspective what you think about policing, what you think we're doing, and why we're doing it. Okay, now, let's get on with the questions. Hello, Chief White. My name is Daniel. Since you're a man of color, what was your perspective on police brutality before you joined the force? I think most police officers come to work every single day and they do the right thing. There are small pockets of police officers who do not treat everyone the same, especially when they're confronting people of color, which is really why I was more determined to stay on the police department to get these ranks and try to become a chief so I can help make some of those changes. My name is William, and why do you think racism exists? To be, to be perfectly candid, uh, there are still individuals in this country that sees people of color lesser than what they are. And while we've made a lot of progress over the last hundreds of years as it relates to racism, the reality of it is it still exists. And I'm hoping by the time you all become adults, you will play a significant role in addressing some of the racism that we see in our country. Hello, Chief White. My name is Janela Martinez. If you were a parent of a victim of police brutality, how would you handle it? The first thing that I would ask is, what was my, and I have two boys and a girl, what were you doing where you got to be assaulted by a police officer? Did you contribute to that? Okay, and after we had that conversation and I felt that the officer's actions were inappropriate, I would go straight to police headquarters, ask to speak to some supervisor, or depending on what it was, maybe get a lawyer and say that we're gonna, that we're gonna deal with this. But obviously I would be very upset about that uh, and I would certainly want, and if I felt the police officer's actions were inappropriate, I would want to hold that police officer accountable for his or her actions. Hi, Chief Fight. My name is Hector, and I want to know if, are police officers usually justified when killing someone without a gun? Depends. It depends on the scenario. If, if, uh, if I'm driving a car, and the car is coming towards the police officer, and it's, hitting, it's going to hit the officer, or it's hit the police officer, and he also has no other option but to try to save his life, his or her life, and they have to use a gun to do that, that might be very well justified. But let me tell you what the bottom line is when it comes to police officers and shooting. Officers are trained to use the least amount of force necessary to address the issue. So what that means is you call the police and it's a, and it's a situation where they can talk the person out of committing whatever they're doing, they should do that. If it's a situation where it requires them to use mace to fix that issue, that's what they're required to do. If it's a situation where it requires them to use their taser to address that issue, that's what they have to do. And if it's a situation where they have to use a service weapon and they have no other options and somebody's life is in immediate danger, you're going to die if I don't use my service weapon to save you, I'm justified in doing that. Or I'm going to die if I don't use my service weapon to save myself. I'm justified in doing that. So then the other question becomes, a lot of adults ask this question is, well, how come they also don't shoot the person in the leg or shoot the person in the arm? Great question. Well, we train officers to shoot at the largest part of the body because we want them to hit what they're shooting at because it's a life-threatening situation. If they have the time to sit back, aim, and uh, say, I'm going to shoot you in your arm, I would probably say their life is not in immediate danger, to be honest with you, if they have that kind of time. Hi, my name is Edwin, and do you think police brutality is a big problem, or what are you doing to fix it? One incident is, is, is too many incidents. So what we do to fix it is, number one, we have zero tolerance. We do not tolerate police brutality in the Denver Police Department. And when there are examples of that, those individuals are held accountable. A held accountable means they're disciplined, and discipline could run anywhere from getting a fine to being fired, depending on what the scenario is. I mean, you have good teachers, bad teachers, good doctors, bad doctors, and you have good police officers and some bad police officers. The bad police officers, it's my job to either correct their behavior or they need to find another job. So we have zero tolerance for that. My name is Keyshawn, and as a black, as a young black male, how would you suggest I interact with police officers? This is what the answer should be. It doesn't really matter what your color is, you should interact uh, with police officers uh, in a respectful manner, the same way that you want the officers to interact with you. Now, you know, it's this, uh, some of us that are men of color say that we have to have the talk with our children. And what the talk is, look, when you get stopped by the police, 
you need to understand these are certain things you need to do. You know, put your hands on the steering wheel. Uh, don't, you know, don't be reaching for your gloved compartment. Don't reach in your, don't, don't reach in your, uh, in, your, in your pocket. Don't make any kind of movement that would make the officer feel uncomfortable. It's unfortunately that we have to have this conversation is what we do. If you get stopped by a police officer, you need to be respectful. You need to do what the officer is going to ask you to do unless it is something completely illegal. And if you have an issue with it, they're required to give you their name. They have to either give you a business card, which they all have, or they give you their name. Get that business card, get that officer's name, get the number on the scout car, and take it home and give it to an adult and address it outside of the incident. When you're going to confront them and you want to get into this big argument, you're going to end up losing. So the answer to your question is the same thing that your parents will tell you with anyone. Be polite, be responsive, be courteous, and if you have an issue, get the information and take it home and share that with, with your family member. Uh, so be very mindful. What you do today will determine what you become tomorrow. And I am a believer that you can almost be, be anything in this country that you want to be. Again, thank you very much.